In today's video we're going to take a look at a Burroughs Class 8 portable adding machine made somewhere in the 1930s. This particular machine is a six column sterling version. It does addition only and the output is printed at the back here. Like that. I'll just step back in time a bit to when the machine first arrived with me for repair and we can have a look at some of the problems that existed with it. OK, a quick first look at the Burroughs adding machine. It's an old sterling version and the clock's about to strike. As we were saying, it's the old sterling version. You'd enter your amount, your amount of money, pull the handle, and it would show that amount. If you hit subtotal, it'll show you the current total, but keep the total in the register. And if you hit total, it'll show you the total and clear it out of the register. But in this case, it's not clearing when you hit total. It's absolutely full at the moment. 999.1911. So at the moment something's sticking. So the next thing is to take it apart and have a look. There's a couple of screws at the front here that release the case. I'll get those out. And then you can see the case is sort of free, but actually the print head has to come off, or not the print head, but the uh, printer roll holder and the reels. So we'll have a quick look at that. Uh, the covers come off the reels for the printer ribbon like that, quite nice and easy. Oh, and the handle just pulls out like that. Let's get rid of the ribbon, it's a pretty standard typewriter ribbon. Okay, what have we got here? So, there's one screw here that holds the sort of printer ribbon, not ribbon, reel section on. I've already had a quick look at this but I haven't taken it apart yet. A couple of screws that hold this cover over here. I might cut a few bits out of this because it's too slow. And there's a screw down here that also holds this section on. I'm not going to take them out fully yet because I want to see... Yeah, it might, might be only that, but I suspect there's going to be more because somehow it has to drive the printer ribbon. And I haven't seen how it does that yet. Okay, that was kind of really easy. Okay, that's the um, yeah, printer paper holder and ribbon holder bit off. So I'm guessing, maybe, that, yay, there we go, cover off. Okay, I'll just pop the handle back on, stand in front of the camera again. Let's see if it's obvious what should be clearing the total. Hmm. Not obvious yet. I shall look a bit further. As I mentioned earlier, this machine is an old sterling currency machine. So we've got the old pennies here. There were 12 of those into a shilling, or 240 in a pound, so the keys go from 1 to 11. Next door, we've got the shillings themselves. There were 20 of those in a pound. They were equivalent now, I suppose, to 5p. You can see you've just got a row of 1s here, because the most you can key in is 19, so it doesn't matter which of the 1s you press in the 10s column, it'll always just be a 1. 
Moving over to the remaining three columns, these are the full pounds, and so the highest total this machine could go to would be 999 pounds, 19 shillings and 11 pence. Operating the machine is fairly straightforward. You type in a number, pull the handle, and the number is printed out and added to the accumulator. Type in another number, pull the handle, and that number is also printed out and added to the accumulator. If you press the subtotal button and pull the handle, it will print out the current total, but it will leave the number in the accumulator so you can add more numbers to it. If you press the total button, it will print out the current total, but it will clear the accumulator so you can do another sum. If you want to add a number multiple times, you press the repeat button, and then type in the number that you want, and pull the handle as many times as you want to add that amount. And when you're done, just press the error or clear button, and the keys pop back up again. If you want to add a number that will print out but not be added to the accumulator, you press the non-add button and then pull the handle and it will print the number you've typed in but not add it to the accumulator. OK, I've moved in a little bit closer so we can do some addition. Imagine we'd gone to the shops sometime in the 1930s and we bought ourselves a pound of butter for one shilling. And we bought a dozen eggs for one shilling and eight pence. And we bought a pint of milk for two pence. And a bag of flour for five pence. And we bought a pound of sugar for two pence. And a bag of rice also for two pence. And a newspaper for three pence. And then we went to the shop next door and splashed out on a shiny new bicycle for six pounds and ten shillings. And then we went to the shop beside that and really splashed out on a radio for seven pounds and fifteen pence. And we thought, how much have we spent so far? So we pressed the subtotal button, cranked the lever, and we spent fourteen pounds, eight shillings and ten pence. And we thought, well... Let's get ourselves some biscuits as well. So we spent another five pence on biscuits and gave the grand total of 14 pounds, nine shillings and threepence. When I first took the machine apart, I had to familiarize myself with how it worked to try and find out why it wasn't working correctly. When you press one of the numbers on the keyboard, you'll, it'll drop down a little peg and that'll interact with this rack here. There's one of those for each row of keys. So for instance if I press down number two over here and crank the handle the rack will move a little bit and then interact with that peg. If I press down the number seven, this one here, the rack will move much further before it interacts with that peg. Looking at the back of the machine you've got the accumulator section here and then these notched racks here which are attached to the printing numbers up here. If I type in a number 5 into the furthest column, the rack will move up and then as it moves down the accumulator is moved towards it and the rack clicks the accumulator the corresponding amount of clicks. When you press the subtotal or total button as you crank the handle, the accumulator is moved in towards that rack, transferring the number from the accumulator to the print heads. And that's what wasn't happening when the machine first came. If you pressed subtotal or total, the accumulator didn't move, so the rack just went straight up to the maximum value. I'd already been through the machine, cleaned off the old automotive grease and oiled all the pivots and bearings, or at least I thought I had. After much head scratching, I found tucked behind this lever here, there was another pivot. 
when you press the total button, that little lever on that pivot should move to the upward position, and there's a little peg here that will actually interact with that to engage the accumulator into the rack when you want a total. But that lever was stuck in the down position, so you weren't getting a total. Here's a bit of footage from when I initially looked at the machine, and you'll notice how that lever doesn't move at all, it just sticks in the bottom position. Once I'd cleaned and oiled that, everything's working fine. That covers most of the internals of the machine. There's a little lever up here that advances the paper and printer ribbon each time you move the crank handle. And of course you've got the print heads up here. I think that's about it for this video. If you've enjoyed watching, feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel. There'll be more vintage stuff and repairs coming soon. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a future video.